Welcome to lesson 5 of my Visual C Sharp language series. In this video, we discuss function and parameters. Okay, so let's get started by creating a new project, Windows Forms application. We are going to call this Lesson 05. Okay. And once we have that, we're going to pin open our toolbox. We're going to drag open our typical button, our typical text box. And this time we'll also add in a label. I'm not sure if we're going to use this or not. I'm considering it. Okay. And then we're going to double click here. We will actually, whoops, no, I do not want that. We're going to double click on the button to get the event handler for the button. And just so you see here, the event handler for the for, for the form, the default one that it gives you is the, the load function when the form loads. Okay, so as I said uh, in the introduction, in this um, tutorial we're going to be covering uh, functions and how to use them and the properties of functions. Uh, but first, uh, before we do that, I'm going to cover how to uh, create your own event handlers. Now, uh, creating event handlers um, directly in code it isn't very easy because you have to go to the uh, constructor of the form and this is all object oriented programming I will discuss this later and you have to add in your own event handler and it's really complicated so we're not going to do that but instead uh, if you want to have a different event that you want handled you can click on the little event the thunderbolt thing in the properties menu and here you can create your own event so I'm just going to select uh, some random event the text changed and we're going to just write in the name that we want the event handler function to be and then click enter and it will create uh, your own custom uh, handler now if you want to get rid of this handler uh, what you do is you uh, get rid of the text you compile it and it will give you an error and then click no double click on the error and this will bring you to the constructor and delete the line of code that is labeled. That's the easiest way to get rid of one without searching through this entire thing. As you see, it's uh, pretty big. Okay, now let's get uh, back here. Um, now we are going to uh, create our own function. And we're going to model it similarly to these event handlers that you see above. We're going to start with private void and here you type the name of the function I'm going to call this test function we have an opening and closing parenthesis we have our open brace and we have our closing brace and this is right now basically an empty uh, function some other programmers like the C++ programmers actually prefer to have their braces right here but it doesn't really matter so Let's then we're going to break this apart. So here's the first part which defines the, the scope of the function. And in this case it's private. The two common ones that you're going to be using are private and public. You see public is here which is defining the class. And we'll just, again discuss classes later. And this defines whether um, this function can be accessed um, inside or outside of the class or the object. Yeah, and we'll discuss this a lot later. Um, and now we have our void. And uh, this represents whether the function returns a value. We have our name of our function. And we have our parenthesis. And as you see, there's nothing in here, but there are things in here. And, and what are inside here? What are called parameters, which are variables that you send into the function. So. I'm going to try and give like a simile to describe a function. You can call um, a, a function a, a very similar to say a command or a set of instructions. Now you can have just a plain set of instructions that you do not need altered. You just follow the instructions and it does something. Maybe you need to uh, 
when you follow the instructions, you need to have specific data to follow the instructions. And that data that you need to follow the instructions are what we can call parameters. And sometimes uh, when you follow the instructions, you, you do it to get something. And that is what is called a return value. So I hope that kind of clarifies uh, how that works. So let's get started by calling this function uh, in our button one or click event. We can do this by typing the name of the function, opening and closing parenthesis, and our semicolon, which ends the statement. And now we are going to compile the application. We're going to click the button, and as you see, it doesn't do anything because there's nothing in here. Do anything. Okay, now we're going to uh, write some code in here. Um, just to show you that you can access the controls from a different function. We're going to do our popular. Um, yeah, let me see here. Actually, this time I'm going to modify the label. I'm going to try something a little different here. So, label one dot text equals uh, whatever. Look here, this is just a string. Now we're going to recompile, push the button, and it says whatever. Okay, so uh, now we are going to try something a little bit different. We are going to add in a parameter. We are going to give our set of instructions some information displaying what to put into um, the label. And we are going to declare a variable, uh, just like right here, we have the object variable, which is called sender, and the event arguments variable, which is called e. We are going to declare a string variable as our parameter. We're going to call it text. And as you see, uh, this is in red now. And the, the reason why is because there's no uh, parameter in here. So now we're going to get rid of this line of code. And similarly what, to what we did in the last um, video, we're going to put in the name of the variable. So label one.text equals text, which is the name of the variable. So now you're going to um, put in the parameter. There's actually multiple ways I can show you how to do this, and I will show you a different method which will utilize the text box later. So we're going to put test info right here in a string. So we call the function, we pass in the, in the string value called test info. This variable takes it and pops it into the label. So let's go ahead and compile. Push the button and it says test info. Now for this next demonstration, we are going to put some information into the text box. We're going to press the button and um, what's in the text box will enter into the label. Okay, so let's get started with this. We're going to get rid of this uh, parameter right here. We're going to put in text box one. Whoops. I'm sorry, guys. Dot text. There we go. Does not contain a definition for text. Or it's I can, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. There we go. That should do it. Okay. So now we call the function in here. We populate it with the value of text box one dot text. And then it takes in the parameter and it applies that uh, value to the text property of the label. So let's go ahead and compile. That's right there. Oh, the typical hello world. Press the button and the label becomes hello world. Okay, so now we're going to try and return a value. We're going to um, ask the function to give us some information and we're going to use this information. So in our button one click event, we're going to type in label one dot text equals test function. Okay, 
and it should give us an error for multiple reasons. Okay. And you're probably looking like, how is this possible? We have a, a property or variable here, the text property, and we're saying it equal to a function. Well, it's possible if we set a return variable, and we can do that by changing the void value right here. We have to change this to the type of variable which we are returning, and I'm going to return a string. So we're going to put in string here. And then we're going to take this out, and just like uh, the typical uh, int main function that in C++ more than 32 console applications we're going to you know, type in return, and this time in a string, hello testing one, two, three. And there we go. Now we are going to compile this application. Okay, so let's go ahead and click the button. And it looks like we got some build errors. Okay, so let's take a look at this. No overload for method test function takes zero arguments. Okay. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I'm going to take out this parameter. Okay. So, yeah, th this is just an example of the typical you know, programming mistakes that can happen. So let's go ahead and uh, compile. We press the button. It says, hello, testing one, two, three. Okay, well, uh, that's it for this tutorial, which I uh, demonstrate functions and how to send in parameters and how to return values and how to call them. And that is it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please go to thehackersjournal.com.